Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha, Kodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the true name of the God of Israel. Yahweh Shai is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one and only true name is Yahweh Shai. And um, pretty much what inspired me to do this lesson, you know, the so-called white man, which there's no such thing as a so-called white person. All right. When you read the scriptures after the flood, there was 18 nations that was established. Now, there's only one chosen nation, and that chosen nation is the nation of Israel, which are you so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native American Indians. Now, concerning the so-called white man. His true identity is that he's an Edomite. He's a descendant of the man named Esau in the scriptures. All right. And that's who's ruling the world today. You know, the central bankers on down the different industries, whether it be food, entertainment, music, clothing, anything you can possibly think of is going to go back to a so-called Jew or Edomite. All right. Now, in these school systems, they be institutionalizing our people and teaching our people lies, pretty much teaching us that, you know, we was just slaves. <laughs> we only pretty much good for being slaves and that, you know, the only way to really become something is coming under the authority of the so-called white man. All right. They make it seem like when these Edomites, you know, in the form of conquistadors, in the form of slave masters during slavery and even before that concerning our so-called Native American Indian and different Indian and Hispanic speaking on tribes. All right. They make it seem like like they civilized us, you know, like they they um, taught us how to live. But really, it's the other way around, because when you look at all these inventions, as you can see here, we build up America, you know. The, the blood, sweat, and tears through the rape, robbery, and murder. The children of Israel established America and made America great. All right? But they make it seem like we ain't shit. You know, they make it seem like we lazy. You know, we haven't contributed anything to America. But look at all these inventions that was created. Everything that we use worldwide, it comes from a so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American Indian man. All right. As you can see here, you know, you could pause the screen. You could look at that. But these are all Israelites that came out with this. Look at that. But then they want to label us the minority. You know, we taught the so-called white man how to live off this land. He didn't know how to survive through certain seasons. You know how to grow certain crops in particular seasons. You know how to survive harsh weather. You know, we, we are the ones that really civilized these Edomites, all right? So as you can see here, I'm just going to scroll through it very slowly. It says um, black or Afro-American inventors, which we're not black or African-American or Africans in general. We're Israelites. The reason why we get called these surnames outside of what we are labeled in the scriptures, because it goes back to the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28. Mainly verse 37. It says that we was going to be called an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations. Why? Because we sinned against the Heavenly Father. Therefore, the consequence of breaking the law, statutes, and commandments was that we would be kicked out of our land and, you know, we would pretty much be looked down upon. All right? So, as you can see here, you know, these are the inventors. This is the inventions, that's the date, and that's the patent. You know, the word patent, it means like a copyright or like a license, right? So look at all these inventions, man. We made America what it is. You know, these Edomites, they're not a great people, man. You know, pride has deceived them. Look at this. Here they are institutionalizing our people, having our people think they ain't shit. You know, they was just slaves. You can never really amount to nothing unless you come under the banner of the Edomites, the so-called white man in the sea line. But then when you start doing your research, you're like, damn, everything that we use in society, it comes from an Israelite.
because Jacob is the former of all things. All right. Look at all this. You could pause the screen. You could look at all these inventions. You know, you can search this up yourself. You don't got to feel inferior to no damn Edomite or any heathen nation. Right. So let's just get into the lesson briefly. This is um, Jeremiah 10 and 16. It says the portion of Jacob is not like them. Because when you get a deep understanding, you know that it's, a, it's about being a part of the elect. Which to be a part of the elect of the nation of Israel, this is a predetermined thing. This is a predestined thing. Going back to Ephesians, the first chapter. The heavenly father, Yahweh, he selected Pacific spirits before the world began to be saved by and through his son, his only begotten son. Yahweh all right? The only spirit that the Heavenly Father created. But everything you see around you, the Heavenly Father gave Yahweh the blueprint to create everything you see around you, along with the elect of the nation of Israel, the 144,000. But in order for you to have that understanding, you have to be a part of the elect and you have to learn from the men that the Lord set up, which is who? First and foremost, the apostles of Great Millstone. Then the elders of Great Millstone, then the brothers of Great Millstone as a whole, as well as men that teach and like mine, exactly like us. Because every Hebrew Israelite camp is not the same. You have camps that's under the 501c3 charter. Meaning what? There's certain there's a certain way they have to teach, or else they will breach their 501c3 tax exempt status. Alright? So you're gonna have particular camps that don't that don't go all the way into end time prophecy like concerning the mark of the beast being the rfid chip implant you know talking about the nwo slash 2030 agenda there's certain things they're not going to be able to go into so when you come into this truth just stick with great millstone you know read the description of my videos start out by watching those specific channels and then when you get built up through the spirit then you can you know watch other channels all right other great millstone channels so it says the portion of Jacob is not like them. So ultimately, you know, it's talking about the elect. All right. In that sentence, because two thirds of the nation of Israel, when you read Zechariah 13 and 8 and plenty of other scriptures, they're going to be destroyed. Why? For their unbelief, for them rejecting the ways of the heavenly father, his only begotten son, not having faith. And ultimately, they want to follow after the way of the heathen. They want to live their American dream which is going to require them if they want to keep their lives during the hour of temptation, they're going to have to deny Yahweh and Yahweh Shai by getting this RFID chip implant when it's made mandatory. All right. So now back to the topic, it says, for he is the former of all things. When you go into this word former, let's let it play. Strong's H 3335. Yat Yatsad. Yat it says to form, fashion, frame of human activity, right? Inventions of divine activity, of creation, of original creation, of individuals at conception, of Israel as a people, to frame, preordain, plan, divine purpose of a situation, to be formed, be created, to be predetermined, be preordained, to be formed, right? So it says... For he is the former of all things. So all these inventions, because that's the topic, all these inventions that you see around you, an Israelite created this, right? So imagine a world without the nation of Israel. You wouldn't have these inventions. You wouldn't have these inventions. Here you have these heathen, they look down upon us, but these major inventions, they come from our people. As you can see here, right? So it says, for he is the former of all things. And Israel is the rod of his inheritance because the Israelites is the only chosen nation. Yes, all nations come from Adam, but not all nations. When you read the scriptures, it's promised um, salvation. Not all nations was given the law, statutes and commandments. Not all nations was told to live in the land of Israel. All nations, they have the inheritance, but there's only one chosen seed line on the planet Earth. And it's you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. We are the children of Israel, all right? But it goes deeper than just believing in you an Israelite. It says, the Lord of hosts is his name. 
And what's the name of the heavenly father? Yahweh, the God of Israel. And you can't just worship him alone, right? You have to worship his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And he only has one name, all right? Let's keep it going. It's going to be a uh, quick lesson. This is Matthew 5 and 13. It says, ye are the salt of the earth. You know, anytime you cook on something and according to the law of the scriptures, you're supposed to season it with salt. All right. Back when we used to do burnt offerings, we you read um, Leviticus, the second chapter, I believe, you know, the Lord required us to put salt on our offerings. All right. But check this out. It says, ye are the, ye are the salt of the earth. So imagine a world without the Israelites. You know, everybody wants to be racist towards us, which, you know, that's that's your right. You could be like that. But these people act like like we ain't shit, though, you know. But look at look how much we contribute to society, right? The reason why you see our people in this low condition, you know, mainly is our fault for breaking the law, statutes, and commandments. But it goes back to the agenda of the heathens. When you read Psalms, the 83rd chapter, all right? The way how you see our people acting degenerate, that's an agenda by the so-called white man, the Edomites, all right? It says, ye are the salt of the earth. So if we wasn't here to build all these inventions, right? If the Heavenly Father didn't create us to be these great um, people, you wouldn't have the world be a different place. It says, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? Yeah, because without Yahweh and Yahweh Shai and having his truth and knowing the correct gospel and doctrine to believe on, right? Without you proving your faith through your works, showing Yahweh and Yahweh Shai through your actions that you believe, all right? It says, it is dense for good for nothing. So you good for nothing. You pretty much just born in vain. Yeah, you, you great, but it's temporal. It's not amounting to spiritual things, right? It says, but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. And that's what's been happening with all these captivities we've been in. The nation of Israel, when you read the scriptures up until now, we kept going into captivity. Why? Because we kept breaking the law, statutes, and commandments. We kept following the way of the heathen. So our people, you know, they want to try and um, segregate themselves. You know, they want to try to do things their own way. But really, according to their enemy's system, you're not going to prosper like that. You got our people to act like, oh, well, let's put our money together and let's go to Africa. But then you're still going to be under the authority of the central bankers. Because no matter what country you win, you have to operate under the central banker system, which the central bankers are who? The Rothschilds and the different banking families, but mainly them. All right. They're the ones that control the central bank. No matter what country you go to, you have to use whatever currency they tell you you can use. So that would just be stupid, no matter what country you win. The point is, we need Yahweh Shai to physically deliver us. But before he comes, there's certain prophecies in the form of current events that have to come to pass, such as Jacob's trouble, which involves a global economic collapse, all right, the persecution of Hebrew Israelites worldwide, and everything that involves the downfall of society, right? And then the hour of temptation. Which involves what? The time period when they make that mark of the beast, which is the RFID chip implant only, mandatory. All right? And then shortly after that, you're going to have the destruction of Babylon the Great by thermonuclear missiles. Those are the main prophecies that we're waiting on. Right? So now, let me end it with this. This is um, Zechariah chapter 11 and verse 5. It says, who possesses slay them? Now, who's the possessors? What nation are we in captivity under? The nation of Edom. The nation that was prophesied to come back into rulership. And they're ruling pursuant to what scriptures? Second Ezra 6 and 9 and plenty of other scriptures. Esau is the end of the world, meaning that he's ruling in his present age before Yahweh comes back, that great millstone, and take him out of power. That time period is coming, man. You know, we don't have too much longer left. It says, whose possessors slay them. So who's our possessors with an S? The heathen nations. They've been slaying us. All the captivities we've been under. And just go on YouTube. Search up how black people get treated in Yemen, you know, Saudi Arabia, India. We already know how we get treated in America. That's the most famous one. But there was different slave trades, man. It wasn't just the transatlantic slave trade. 
it wasn't just a British or Dutch or an Iberian slave trade. You know, you had an Indian Ocean slave trade. All these nations had a hand in the downfall of the nation of Israel. Every single heathen nation um, prospered off of our oppression and putting us into captivity. All these heathen nations had a hand in the downfall in the nation of Israel. All right. Let's keep it going. It says, whose possessors slay them and how they've been slaying us, you know, with their, their system. It says, and hold themselves not guilty. So they don't hold themselves not guilty. You know, they tell you to, to get over the past. You know, this is the present. Everybody is one now. But that's not what the Heavenly Father said. When you read Ecclesiastes 3 and 15, he said he requireth the things that are past, including slavery. So we don't need to get over nothing because we're still being oppressed. It says, and they that seldom say, right, then um, different slave trades take place, right? It says, <clears throat> blessed be the Lord for I am rich. So that's how these Edomites, they acquired their wealth through the slave trades, all right? Or for the oppression of the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. These people that call themselves the J-E-W-S's, the ones that truly run the world, all the different industries, all the different, you know, entertainment worlds, no matter what category is in, all right? Their wealth comes from slavery. These banks was established through slavery. Even the Queen of England, before she died, where did her wealth come from? The British slave trade. So all these Edomites that look down upon us, even though we contributed so much to the world, all right, they got their wealth off of our blood, sweat, and tears through the rape, robbery, and murder that they did to the nation of Israel. And they got to pay for that. So it says, so that's how they got rich. Even um, concerning the transatlantic slave trade, who financed the ships? The so-called J-E-W-S's, you know, the small hats, right? The Edomites. It says, and their own shepherds pity them not. They don't care. You know, after so much we contributed to society and the world, worldwide, you know, we still get looked down upon. You know, we still called minority. We still looked at as we ain't shit, you know? The so-called white man, he feels like he, he civilized us, like he did us a favor by putting us in captivity. But that's that's not true, though, all right? So let me just get one more scripture. Actually, let me get this one. Isaiah 14. Yep. This is Isaiah 14 and 21. It says, prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers. So you Edomites, you're going to have to pay for your sins for what you did to the Lord's chosen people, the nation of Israel, right? And you will. Once the Lord comes back, all of you heathen are going into slavery. It says, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. So that's what's going to happen, man. The time period is coming where you heathen nations, y'all going to go to captivity. Once Yahweh Shai comes back, y'all going into captivity for 1,000 years for what y'all did to the nation of Israel. And after that 1,000 years, pursuant to Obadiah, the first chapter, you Edomites as a whole is going to be wiped out after serving your punishment. All right. Let me get one more scripture. This is Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, verse 15. It says, that which have been is now, referring to a reincarnation, because reincarnation is in the scriptures. That's why the scripture I read before, it said, prepared slaughter for the iniquity of their fathers. Meaning what? The previous generations. So yes, the past does matter. The past affects the future and present. So it says, that which have been is now, and that which is to be have already been, referring to the spirits, all right? All these spirits that you see walking around, they've been here before. It says, and the Most High requireth that which is past, referring to what? Slavery. The captivities the nation of Israel was in under the heathen nations. They're going to have to pay for that. You know, they, they think that nothing is going to happen to them. But, you know, with all these prophecies that's coming to pass... Yeah, Havashai, he's coming back, you know, very soon. And when he comes back, the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. So Lord willing, you was edified by this lesson. Shalom.